Why are things so good? I'm telling you why. Nutrisweet is why. Those were the good old days when manufactured sweeteners like aspartame delivered sweetness and promised good health. We'd all be thin and happy. It's not quite that simple because we now know data from Harvard Medical School that children who eat you know, diet sodas gain weight. Well, how could this be? You know, there's no calories. Dr. Barry Sears says more and more research shows this empty sweetness makes the body expect food. When it doesn't arrive, you actually get hungrier. And so this begins to explain the paradox. The more basically uh, sugar-free drink, uh, soft drinks you drink, the fatter you become. And not only may artificial sweeteners increase obesity, many experts say they're bad for you in other ways. So why am I pouring a diet cola into a hot pan? Well, the heat simulates what happens in your body when you consume aspartame, breaking it down into toxic formaldehyde. Food scientist Woodrow Monty explains that the aspartame molecule contains a precursor to formaldehyde, methyl alcohol. And the circulation of the brain and the, and, the, and the veins and arteries of the brain, there's an enzyme that can convert methyl alcohol to formaldehyde and in the human breast. Monty says that means an increased risk of breast cancer. This chart shows how breast cancer has risen along with the increased use of aspartame. That conversion into formaldehyde could also mean multiple sclerosis. With MS, the body attacks the nervous system and scars the brain. Plus, this Chinese study found that even extremely low doses of formaldehyde damage the brain's memory proteins. It can start changing its structure and the way it folds and start producing strange misformations and malformations, the same kind of malformations that we find in Alzheimer's disease. After the Food and Drug Administration approved aspartame in 1981, Monty wrote of his concerns that the sweetener might cause cancer, as well as genetic damage and birth defects. We did not know, and I said we do not know, but we're experimenting. Well, now we do know. And the answer to all three of those questions is yes, yes, and yes. Recently, when leading European researchers found a cancer connection, the government still wouldn't budge. FDA finds no reason to alter its previous conclusion that aspartame is safe as a general-purpose sweetener in food. Yet the International Agency for Research on Cancer now names formaldehyde, produced in the body by aspartame, as definitely causing cancer. Janet Star hull says aspartame caused her potentially fatal thyroid disease in the early 90s, she wrote Sweet Poison, describing her affliction and recovery. And those experiences motivated her to investigate the 1998 FDA approval of another artificial sweetener, Splenda, also known as sucralose. Everything that we had warned about aspartame, please don't do it, don't give it to your child, don't use it during pregnancy, don't give it to the elderly or those that are sick. We're having to say the same thing about Splenda. The FDA says the agency looked at 110 sucralose studies in humans and animals. They concluded, many of the studies were designed to identify possible toxic effects, including carcinogenic, reproductive, and neurological effects. No such effects were found. Hull disagrees about what those studies found. Cancer in the laboratory mice, okay, had hind leg paralysis. The male rats had infertility issues. The female rats had aborted fetuses and problems during, during pregnancy. Her doubts about Splenda focus on the fact that it's manufactured from sugar by adding three chlorine atoms. How much chlorine, how much do you consume every day? Do you consume your swimming pool? Do you drink that water when you swim? Hull says the more you use, the more you lose. With potential asthma and breathing difficulties, sinus issues, even bladder and kidney problems. Again, the government says no problem. The body can't even digest Splenda. Hull disagrees. They're even saying in some Japanese studies it can digest up to 27%. So what you're looking at is the body really is going to break this down into chlorine. With serious concerns about Splenda and aspartame, what about saccharin? After all, it used to carry a cancer warning. In the 80s, aspartame products even advertised no saccharin. However, it's been around for more than 100 years. It's the only artificial sweetener Monty uses 
because it won't break down into threatening chemicals. Still, he uses it sparingly. If we make that food that doesn't taste good, taste good, whether through sweeteners or artificial flavorings, is that a good thing to do? We're fooling our bodies? You don't want to fool nature. With the continuing concerns about artificial sweeteners, experts say natural sweeteners, in moderation, may be the best option for health-conscious consumers. Galen Tethro, CBN News.